Hey everybody, this is Harriet Kimmick, the host of Down to Earth, the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And today on our show, I'm going to talk with you about, did you do the work? And I'm using as my scripture base, Zechariah chapter 7, and we're talking about, for context and for background, we're talking about, did you do the work for you to get delivered? Did you do the work so that you can get out of the situation that we are in? Did we do the work as a nation? Did you do the work as a corporation? to be able to sit back and do exactly what you were instructed to do. So for context, we're talking about Zechariah chapter 7. And Zechariah is a prophet in the Old Testament. And Zechariah lived at the same time with Haggai the prophet. Yeah, we talked about Haggai some months ago. Right. And so they got a word from the Lord to take to the people. See, in those days, the people lived by the word of God. Today, we don't because today we think we postulate and we pontificate and we think we're more important than God. And none of us have lived eternally. I don't care what kind of cryosphere and crypto, whatever they come up with. There is no one alive who has lived more than the specified time that you've been given. There is nobody alive who lived during uh, the Spanish Inquisition or nobody alive <laughs> who lived during Christopher Columbus's uh, expedition to the Americas. Let us be clear that we all have a limited time span and within that limited time span, we are to do what is good, just, kind and be compassionate. That's what we're supposed to do as humans. Uh, it's the least, I like to refer to it as your reasonable service. It is the least my daughter likes to say, it is the least that you can do. Amen? Amen. So let us focus and put things back into center, come right back to center, and recognize that we are human living in this planet with other planets around us that we don't know because they haven't told us. There may be people there. We don't know. So we're going to use the scripture as our base. Amen? Amen. So turn with me in your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 7. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And as usual, this is an iPad to which the Bible app has been downloaded. I recognize that there are people in my audience who perhaps are of other religions. I am a Christian, so just uh, so that you know, I am not ignorant of the fact that there are other world religions out there. There are others. And I respect the people who respect their religions. I respect your religious belief. But I'm sharing with you as you listen to me, that this is my belief and it is based upon the scriptures, the ancient writings. Just like your religion has ancient writings, so does this one. Amen? Amen. So Zechariah chapter 7, verses 4 to 14. And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah saying, The word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, say to all the people of the land and to the priests, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months during those 70 years, did you really fast for me? That's a rhetorical question. So this is God asking the rhetorical questions and he's asking these and he's expecting the answer. So it, here's the thing, just like I tell my children, if I ask you a question, I already know the answer. If God is asking a question, what does he do? He already has the answer, right? So he said, when you eat and when you drink, did you do it for me? Did you not drink for yourselves? Should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets when Jerusalem and the cities around it were inhabited and prosperous and the south and the lowland were inhabited? Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, listen to the commands, execute true justice. Hmm. <laughs> Show mercy and compassion. I can literally hear the organs playing. Everyone to his brother. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless. This is written in the Bible. I didn't make this up. This is not a commentary. This is in the Bible. It says do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. Let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother. But what happened? Typical people. They refused to heed. They shrugged their shoulders and stopped their ears so that they would not hear what the prophet is saying. Just like people are doing right now. They're not listening to the prophets, right? Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Then what happened? Thus, here's the explanation. Great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Therefore, it happened that just as he proclaimed, 
and they would not hear, so they called out, and I would not listen. So, wrath, his wrath came, he called out, and we called out to God, and he wouldn't listen. But here's what the Lord of hosts says, I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations which they had not known. Thus the land became desolate after them, so that no one passed through or returned, for they made the pleasant land desolate. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you this morning. As we gather, I pray for someone who is watching, someone who is listening. I pray that I decrease so that you might increase. I pray right now that you deliver your people, that you heal someone's body, that you pull up and extrapolate and rebuke the devourer of our peace, our joy, that you rebuke the devourer who comes against our money in the name of Jesus. I pray that people find employment this week, that you answer someone's desperate cry for homes in the name of Jesus, that you overturn the wickedness, that even when the land appears to be desolate, for the people who call upon your name, O oh God, that you answer someone. Answer someone from their sick bed this morning. Answer someone who needs and has a desperate cry for a child to be delivered. Answer someone, O oh God, who is desperate for money to come into their business. Answer someone today, O oh God, and overturn the wickedness. In Jesus' mighty name, all in agreement, say, Amen. So exactly what happened here. So for context, this is what happened. The Israelites had been captured and were led into somebody's land. The ancient Israelites right? Led into someone's land for 70 years. So the prophet came to them and said, in those days, the people actually believed in God. Isn't that? What a remarkable thing. So they listened to the words of the prophet. But here is what God is saying. You, you did listen to the words. Did you really listen to the words of the prophet? Did you do what the prophet told you to do? What did the prophet tell you to do? execute true justice show mercy and compassion everyone to his brother do not oppress the widow or the fatherless the alien or the poor talking to the people at the border let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother that's what the word says you've got to understand that god spoke to our ancestors long ago we are where we are today because our ancestors did not listen did they? You really think they did? No, they didn't. If they did, we wouldn't have climate change. If they did, we wouldn't have aliens at the border. We refer to people as aliens. Let me ask you something. Where are those people coming from? Do you want us to really go into it? Those people who are coming, this is what we call them, those people. Listen, listen to how we call them. The people who are at the border, those people, they're there because what happened in their ancient lands? I know you like to say from this Christo-fascist mentality that they're there because they are this and they're that. No, they're there because your ancestors took their land and pushed them out of their land. And the crops and the resources and the natural resources from their land, they never got to enjoy. So they show up at the border and we call them the alien or the poor. The Bible says, do not oppress the widow or the fatherless. Are you hearing this? So public policy. And for those of us who own businesses and own corporations, and we look at our bottom line and we determine that we want to be richer. We determine that we can make more money. So we're going to increase the cost of goods and services. We know that there are mothers out there who have to buy diapers and formula. So we're going to make it harder for them to have. So where are the fathers and the mother, the husbands? Where did they go? They said, time out. I've had enough of this. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to enjoy my girlfriend, my boyfriend, whatever. And they took off. The Bible says, do not oppress the fatherless or the widow. The Lord also asked, so the people now, so here are some of the preachers, they come pontificating and postulating, and they say, well, what are you doing? And they say, let's go on a fast. So you fasted, but when you were fasting, were you really fasting from the evil that is in your heart? Or were you fasting because it sounded good to your ears? It's just like Jesus said it. Jesus looked at, what did Jesus do? He pointed at the Pharisees, man. And he said, look at them, don't be like them. They say pretty words in, when they're out in the public. But in the darkness, when no one, the cameras are off and the lights are off, what are they like? 
this is what has happened to us. My friends, I have found that what the ancestors did is my problem. There is a thing that, you know, Christianity likes to say, generational curses. It's not a catchword. It's not a byword. It is true. There are generational blessings as well. So whatever the ancestors didn't do, it becomes our problem because there's a continuity of humanity. It's, we're not animals. We don't crawl around. So one dies and about 10 others, they replicate and duplicate at astronomical levels. No, we're human. We are the holders of the planet. So we are accountable to God and to ourselves. So what happens from one generation, it behooves the next generation for it not to continue. Isn't that what you're all saying that you want to create generational wealth? To create generational wealth, you have to remove the generational bondages. You have to listen. So what the previous generation didn't do, what the ancestors didn't do, becomes our problem. We have to find out what didn't they, you, you know what they didn't do? They did not listen to God. Did they execute true justice? So all of us now, so we live in America contextually. America is a place that was, whose economy was built on the backs of enslaved people. Black people were trafficked from Africa and brought to the Americas to work for free for over 250 years. Let us be clear. So when you look at yourself, you are a descendant of the people who brought people over here. Don't, don't, let's not, let's not even try to shy away from it. The monarchy in England and in Europe, the monarchies exist because what? They participated in the trafficking of people. So their wealth is built upon that. So what God is saying now, your ancestors did not listen. You are here now. So hear what I'm going to say. I'm going to make this land desolate. I'm going to make this place bad because you are not listening. What is he saying? It's simple. The command of God is always simple. Have you ever noticed? God never tells you to go run a marathon or run a decathlon or go, you know, swim across the Bering Straits. He makes it very simple. Execute true justice. So judges, you are to judge justly. Are you hearing? Judges, you are to judge justly. That's what you do. You do what you have not done. The command that God speaks to you. I can't talk about you. So let me talk about myself. I'm going to insert myself here. So every now and then when I bump up against a situation, you know, one of the first things I ask myself, what didn't you do? That's right. I ask myself in the quiet moment, I said, what didn't you do? Where did you miss the boat? Harriet, what didn't you do? So I go back. And I excavate and tear up my circumstances looking for where did I miss the command. Invariably, I always go back to, you know, you didn't do that. That that you heard, that voice that told you, walk this way. It's just like you're driving down the street one night. And all of a sudden, you hear something, something in you. You hear, it's almost so loud, you almost can say it's a voice. It says, don't turn that way. And when you pass it and drive away, Later on, you saw there was an accident there. That's the still small voice. That's what God is saying. He's saying, do the work. Go do what I told you to do. He's saying here, do what you're called to do. He's saying, I called your ancestors to execute justice, to not oppress the fatherless. Do what I told you to do and it is going to be all right. How many times have we gone to this? He told the ancestors this. And, and, and let us just be clear. Look at Jerusalem. You know how Jerusalem ended up, the people, the ancient Israelites ended up being captured. They did not listen to what the prophets told them. They had a ball. They didn't do any of the things. They took in slaves. God told them, don't do that. They still did it. Was that not a type and shadow? And we wonder why descendants, my Caucasian brothers and sisters, we wonder why you are all suffering, why your children are rebellious, why your children are taking opioids and taking every drug. And you ask me, but is not the same thing happening in the black community? Well, well, are we going to collectively repent or are we going to continue to perpetuate the myth that one race is superior and another is inferior? As long as you continue to do that, this land, this earth planet is going to be desolate. Amen. Take notice that you should do what you must to prevent the judgments of God. 
it's not just by fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer doesn't work, doesn't mean this in this context. Fasting and prayer is not going to change anything if you don't do what God tells you to do, even though it is stupid. You want to know how I know? Check me out. So the Lord told me to go on radio. I am Jamaican by birth, by ethnicity. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I wasn't born in Detroit. I'm not from here. But God told me to go on radio and nobody was hiring me as a broadcaster. But God told me to do it. And this was me sitting there. Okay. That means we have to go find somewhere where I can go. So www.google.com. And what do you know? I met a Muslim man through my work in healthcare and who directed me to get on radio. So if I had sat there and I didn't do it and I so on, what would have happened? It gets better. So in 2010, the Lord told me to go on radio. He never told me to stop. I decided that I, my daughter was going to college in 2011, that I should do this and I should do that and it would cost too much. I stopped believing. And what happened? I got off radio and all hell broke loose in my life. That was the beginning of the disobedience. Do what you are told to do, regardless of whether it lines up with what somebody else tells you, regardless of whether it is what everybody else around you is doing. Stop being part of the herd and listen to the command of God. Do what he tells you to do. As a matter of fact, we're so hypocritical because I look at some of these preachers and I look at my colleagues and so on and I'm like, what are you doing, bro? What's up? Are you doing? I look, there is an absence of women who preach. There's an absence of you molding young people and bringing them up. Because when I listen to your messages, it's not appealing. You're not speaking the truth. You're just, when something goes wrong, let us go and fast. No, do what God tells you to do. Because obedience, the Bible says, is better than sacrifice. Amen? The ancestors' disobedience is our problem because they heard the word of the Lord and they didn't do it. I look, again, I'm going to insert myself into this. I had so much adversity in my early life up until five years ago. I began to realize that it was as a result of me not going to college. Guess why I didn't go to college? My mother, who was my parent, because my father took off, so it was she alone. She was a single mother who was raising children. She determined that she was not going to, after we had agreed I was going to college, she determined that she was going to listen to her then husband who told her, don't send me to college. You know what that did? I married the wrong person. Then I ended up in adversity and I needed a college degree so that I could better myself and get a better job and it never worked. Are you hearing me? So now... When it came to me now, I realized that I had to change it. So I had to go back to college to do what they did not do. Do you understand what I'm saying about doing what you are supposed to do? It prevents the next generation from having to go through the stuff. Hello, somebody. Hello. So here are the commands to do. Do not oppress the widow or the orphan, the fatherless, the stranger whom we like to call aliens at the border, the poor and the weakest, show mercy and compassion. Be kind to those in need. Show some mercy, y'all. Y'all are signing checks out there and giving money and spending all your money on OnlyFans. Can you write a check and send it to the Exodus Foundation? Send it to the Red Cross. Find an organization in your town that is helping people instead of spending all your money on ourselves and just giving it away on OnlyFans for the satisfaction of ourselves. Do you see what I'm talking about? None of us have lived existentially. There's not one person alive who was alive when Christopher Columbus sailed to the Americas. So we have a limited time frame. So let us not get outside of ourselves and think that we're so great that we are greater than God. Come on, let's humble ourselves in the eyes of God. I didn't ask you to humble yourself in my eyes. I said, humble yourself in the eyes of God. We miss it. You think that humbling means you have to eat humble pie and act crazy around people. Humble yourself before God. How are you going to do it? By being nice to others, by being compassionate, by judging justly, showing mercy to the fatherless and to the widow. There's so many children in our society. I am one of them. I'm a product of that. So many children in our society who are fatherless. Help somebody up. 
I didn't ask you to go write a check. And yes, there are people who not everybody whom you help up will come up. That's not the point. Give until you find someone who is receptive enough and who is actually doing the work. That's how we do it. Be conscionable. And do not say evil in your heart. So you see your friend over there doing well. Don't look at them and say, how are they doing well? I'm going to steal their idea. I'm going to steal their stuff. And I'm going to be better than them. Don't think evil. Do not be malicious nor spiteful. So just because they passed you does not mean you're going to speed up and, and, and come around me on the freeway. You see how people do that all the time. So malicious. You want to cut me off so that my car crashes. Do you not have to have any compassion? Do we just really see women and children and people, human beings, homeless, in the cold and in the heat? Are we not going to think about it? All the billions that we are making, are we really not going to help other countries? We're helping the Ukraine. What are we helping them for? Because we feel bad for the people in there. But can we also help the people in Yemen? Can we also help the people in Angola? Can we also help the people in Haiti? Can we help the people in the Sudan? First of all, can we help the people who are behind Main Street right here in America? Can we put some money into the social services to lift women and children out of poverty so people don't have to traffic their children? Can we help the people? Can we do that? That is one of the ways by which we'll be listening to God. Amen? Amen. So I want to ask this question. By now, you, you get an idea where this is going. You kind of feel like uh, God is going somewhere with this. Let me tell you something. The ancestors were willfully disobedient. How do we know? Because when slavery was supposed to be abolished, a group of people from Alabama took out a loan and decided they were still going to go across the Atlantic and take more people and traffic more people and brought them back here. 150 years later, well, 200 years later, we're still dealing with the ramifications of it because now everybody wants to run around. Slavery did not happen. You want to erase it from the history books. You want to say it didn't happen, but it did. It is recorded and it did. You, it is your problem. We have to deal with it. Now you want to disenfranchise the descendants of people when you yourself are a descendant of the people who trafficked people. The problems that our ancestors did and their willful disobedience to God is our problem. We're dealing with it. That's why we have these social issues today and you're nodding your head right along. We have to rebuke the stubborn and the carnal mind. We refuse to take admonition. We puffed ourselves up and thought we were too important and we were just like God. Years ago, I remember talking to a, a guy who is a pastor and his title is, bish, is apostle. He's not even a bishop, y'all. He's an apostle. And he said he has dreams from God and we all have visions from God, yeah? But he said... I am next to God. So I said, whoa. So Jesus and the apostles and the patriarchs and the prophets don't even matter. He said, no, I come before them. And I looked at him and laughed him in the face. Why? Isn't that ridiculous? You are alive. You have a limited time frame, three score and ten. After that, it is by God's reasonable mercy on us that we live longer. And you mean to tell me that you... Do you see what I'm saying? The ridiculousness of it. We puff up ourselves with our own importance and think we're more important. We drive past people with our windows up like this. I'm better than them. And you look down on people. You have jobs that you can give people, but you refuse to hire people because you think that you are better than them. You like It's almost as if we get joy from watching the suffering of people. That's the evil in our hearts that we need to pay attention to. God says, erase it out of our hearts. We are deceitful to God. And guess what? We're prejudiced against God. We're so prejudiced against God that even the sermon that you're hearing, you won't even listen to it. You won't even pay attention to this. You resolve to do nothing. You made your hearts like stone and you become inflexible. This is what is called a reprobate mind. We harden our hearts and we tell ourselves that you are not the prophet. So even me, you are resisting the Holy Spirit that is in within me. So God is saying, confess it. And there is, a, there is a thing called turning a deaf ear to God. You know that still small voice that tells all of us 
that this is what you should do. And when you miss it and things go bad, it tends to pile up. And then you realize that's why God told me not to go there. It's like in my situation, when I was getting married earlier in my life, in my early 20s, I'm telling you the very day I heard a voice say, do not marry this man. I didn't. It cost me 20 years to extricate myself out of that. Because one thing led to another, to another. One bad decision just becomes a multiplicity of bad decisions. Amen? Amen. Let us not turn a deaf ear to God. Listen to this. We did it to ourselves because we turned away from God. And a land becomes desolate by the wickedness of the people. Or willful disobedience to the law of God is the problem. And we have to work it out. This is a warning. Our willful disobedience to the laws of God or willful disobedience to what God has told us to execute judgment, execute justice, show mercy, compassion, be kind to the widow and the fatherless and do not plan evil in our hearts towards one another. That's the plan of God. That's the law of God. Our willful disobedience to it has made our land desolate. That's why we're all struggling. That's why we can't understand it. That's why we're all up in arms. And the, those of us who hardened our hearts to hear even this sermon that I'm preaching, even this sermon right now, you dismiss it, you throw it away. That is willful disobedience. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now for somebody who is hearing this, that we will not harden our hearts, that we will actually hear this word, that we will act on it, and that if we find ourselves in a position that we become compassionate and merciful to those in need, let us pray for our brothers and sisters. Let us help one another. Let us touch one another's lives. Let us be kind to the widow, to the fatherless, to the women who and children who are in need. Let us be kind to the poor who can't help themselves. Let us execute public policy that actually engages the people and mitigate the suffering of the people. Let us become and hear the word of God so that God will have mercy on us. Oh God, I end this by saying, have mercy upon us. I pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Be blessed, everybody.